Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so we're going to take you through the 2020 paper. Um, there's not that many solutions for them on, on the web. Um, it's the paper that should have been last June that wasn't, that they gave in November, okay? So um, give it a bash, see how you get on. We're going to do a full playlist, so um, hopefully it will be useful. Question one on paper one. John works as part of a sales team. He earns a basic rate of 12.60 per hour. In addition to his hourly pay, he earns a commission of 22% on any sales he makes above 200 euros each week. During a particular week, John worked 45 hours at the basic rate and made sales amounting to 350 euros. Find John's gross pay for this week. Okay, so this similar question came up before. If I was to guess, I was going to say 2016, but it's about working out overtime, working out um, adding commission onto someone's wages. So what you'll find is that a lot of sales jobs offers you a basic salary and then commission. So in other words, the more sales you make, the more money you get. Okay, And that's why it's as a percentage of sales. And it's there as an incentive to help you sell more and more and more, because obviously the more you sell, the more the company gets. Okay, And they give you a piece of it. So during a particular week, John worked 45 hours at the basic rate. OK, so this is his basic rate. So it's 45 hours at 12.60 per hour. OK, so let's work that bit out. So 12.60 multiplied by 45. Let me grab my calculator. And I got 567 euros for that. OK. Um, and it feels right because 10 euros an hour by 45 would be 450. So it's definitely a little bit bigger than that. So that looks good. So he made sales amounting to 350. OK. So then sales amounting to 350 euros okay so back up here in addition to his hourly pay he earns a commission of 22 percent on any sales he makes above 200 euros in a week okay so that was his sales he only gets commission on sales above 200 so let's subtract off the 200 of that so um he's due commission on 150 euros worth of sales. Okay, now he doesn't get to keep the full 150, he gets to keep 22% of it. Okay, so let's get 22% of it. So it's 150 divided by 100 multiplied by 22. Okay, and there's loads of ways of getting percentage of a number. You could, of course, go 150 multiplied by 0 0.22 if you do it as a decimal. Of course, in your calculator, you can go 150 multiplied by 22 and hit the percentage button. OK, so however you do percentages, do it your way. And you should get 33 euros for that. OK, so his wages, 567 plus the 33 from that. And he is going to earn 600 euros for that week. Part two. During the following week, John worked 51 hours. This included three hours on a Sunday. If John works on a Sunday, he receives 1.5 times the basic rate for those hours. His gross pay for that week was 713.20. Find the amount of sales John made in that week. Huh. Okay. So what they've done here is they've given us his pay. So they've given us this and we have to trickle our way back through the question to get the amount of sales that he made in the week. OK, right. So it's a backwards question. Well, let's work out his wages. OK, this 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 type of part here. OK, because that's kind of standard and then we can figure out then how much extra did he get for commission? 
So let's do Sunday first because there's something different about Sunday. Sunday, he gets 1.5 times the basic rate. So the basic rate was 12 euros. Oh, sorry, I jumped on a page there without even noticing. Um, the basic rate was 12.60. OK, so I have to divide that by two, which is 630. And then I'm going to add that on to 1260. OK, and I get 1890. So 1 1.5 times the basic rate. OK, or of course, I could do 1.5 times 1260. And you're going to get um, 1890 as well. OK, what I did was 1.5 is, is like half his wages again. So I got half his wages for 6.30 and I added it on. So whichever way you do it, I don't mind. So that's his Sunday wages. So it's 18.90 multiplied by three hours. So 18.90 multiplied by three. So on the Sunday, he's getting 56.70. OK, so then how much wages does he get at the normal rate? Well, I need to subtract off those three hours from 51 because he's already now been paid for those uh, three hours. So he has 48 hours at the basic rate. So let's figure out what that is. 48 by 12.60 and it is 6.04. 80. Okay, let's add them together. 5670. And we're getting 66150. Okay, so that's his wages before commission. Okay. Right. So let's see then how much did he make on commission? Okay, so how much did he make then on commission? So one M or two M's in commission, two M's. Okay, so his wages was 713.20 and 66150 of that comes from his wages. So 713.20 minus 661.50. So 51.70 is what he made on a commission. OK, what I was doing there was I was having a little look at the commission he made on this paper or on this week because he got 600 wages. So that's a good bit higher. OK, so remember how we got this. We got 22% of a number and that gave us 33. OK, so the trick here is to know that that 51.70 that he got is equivalent to 22% of sales. OK. Um, and remember, there's a thing where you have to subtract the 200 and I go above 200 euros. OK, and I'll come back to that above 200 bits in a minute. But this is the important bit. 5170 is equivalent to 22 percent of sales, because remember, he's allowed to keep 22 percent of the sales. So if that's the commission he got in his wages, that's the same as 22 percent of sales. So how do I get the original number? Because that's not a 100% number. So I don't divide by 100 to get a percentage. Instead, I divide by its percentage. Okay. And to get the original number, I then multiply by 100%. So when I divide 5170 by 22, in fact, what I'm getting there is 1%. Okay, so if this is 22%, when I divide by 22, I get the equivalent of 1%. And then multiply it by 100, and I'm back to what was his wages before, um, or what was, what was sales before the company gave commission. Okay, so divide by 22, 
and multiply it by 100. Okay, so I'm getting 235 euros. Okay, um, and again, I like to compare it with the question before because it, it, it is a good marker. He, got, he made 350 or he had sales amounting to 350 in this question, but he only got 33 euros. At the minute we have sales of 235 and he's getting 51. So there's still something wrong with sales, okay? Well, what's wrong with the sales is, remember he only gets commission on any sales above 200, okay? So this is the sales that he got commission on. So therefore total sales is 235 plus the 200 euro sales that he got no commission on. And his sales for that week was 435 euros. Okay, that's quite a difficult question, that one. Part B, John pays tax at the standard rate of 20% and at the higher rate of 40%. He has a weekly tax credit of 26. The weekly standard rate cutoff point is 678. Find John's net income for the week where his salary was 71320. Okay, so just a quick preamble about tax in this country. Okay, um, use a straight line. Okay, so tax in this country, the more you earn, the more tax you pay, or that's how this country is designed. Okay, and there's this infinite scale of tax you could pay corresponding to how much wages you could earn, okay? But the government do have this, what it's called standard rate cutoff point, okay? Often called SRCOP, okay? I have to look at the words. So standard rate, there's my SRCOP cutoff point, okay? Um, so what that means is that below this amount, you pay what's called standard rate of tax, And above it, you pay what's called higher rate of tax. Okay. Um, the point being is if your wages are lower with respect to others, you will only ever pay the standard rate of tax. So in other words, in a week, if you earn less than this standard rate cutoff point, you will only ever pay the standard rate of tax. If you earn above it, what happens is you pay the standard rate up until this point, and then you pay the higher rate of tax on any wages above this point, okay? That's why this point, the standard rate cutoff point is very important. So this question is saying that standard rate cutoff point is six, seven, eight. So in other words, in a week, if you earn less than that, you're only paying tax at 20%. If you earn above it, you're paying 20% up to 678 and then any wages you have above it is at 40 percent okay so i hope that makes sense so john earns 713 20 so he's his wages is up here somewhere okay so somewhere here is john's wages so his tax bill is made up of some tax at the standard rate and then some at the higher rate okay so um, so John's tax, okay, um, and it, it's actually called gross tax, but, but you don't have to, I suppose, know that really. But John's gross tax is made up of 20% up to the standard rate cutoff point, and it's 40% of the remainder. So what is the remainder? Well, let's work it out. 713.20 minus 678, okay? The thinking being he pays tax on that 678. So let's take it away from his wages and see how much more wages is he not taxed on, okay? Because you need to be taxed on everything. So 35.20 is what's left, okay? So John's tax bill is that.
Okay, 20% up to the standard rate cutoff point and 40% of the remainder. So let's work some of them out. So 678 divided by 100 multiplied by 20. I am getting 135.60 for that piece. And then 35.20 divided by 100 multiplied by 40. Let's work that bit out. I'm getting 1408. Okay, let's add those two numbers together to figure out what is his gross tax. And I'm getting 149.68 for his gross tax. Okay, now why am I calling it gross tax? Well, because there's tax credits. And tax credits are given to everybody. They are a payment the government says for some reason, don't pay this much of your tax. Maybe you have a mortgage. Maybe you are a carer uh, taking care of an elderly person or, or a person with a disability. Maybe, well, everybody gets tax credits anyway. Even if you're a single person with um, no overarching responsibilities, you still get a tax credit. So everybody's tax credits can be slightly different. Okay, so there's what's called an income tax equation. Um, and the income tax equation says that tax payable is equal to gross tax minus tax credits. So it's 149.68 minus your tax credit. So 149.68 minus that 26, which is the tax credit. So it's 123.68 euros. Okay. I'm gonna put that up there. Okay. So that's the tax payable. Um, was I asked for that? Well, let's go back and check. I, I need his net income. His net income or his take home pay. It's often called take home pay. Is his um, salary, or it's also called his gross income minus tax payable. Okay, so that tax payable, that 123.68 goes off to the government. John never sees that. It's taken out of his account at source or by the company. So that goes straight to the government, to Michal Martin and co, to run the country, okay? Pay the nurses, do the roads, so on and so forth. So John only gets to keep the remainder of it. So 713.20 minus 123.68. So 713.20 minus his tax. And I make that out to be 589.52 is the income that John gets to take home. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.